as you can see I've painted the underside of the wing um, there is a bit of dust on it because it's been sitting for a week um, it hasn't come out too bad there are a couple of patches where it's uh, bubbled a bit but not nothing you know anyway the only the only bad part about this is why does it look grey on there uh, when I took the part where I'd covered the servo horn over um, I took it off and it's peeled some of it off and I've discovered that this stuff is it's not 100% solid stuff uh, which does allow it's a good idea because it allows um, a bit of flex in it before it starts cracking so on here um, underneath this piece here is the easy UHF which you can just see the uh, the connector in there there's another, there's another one in there somewhere it's over there and these go oh come on these go on to the end so on this bit I've got my dipole goes on there for that one and then when I remove this, I'm not going to remove it yet because I've got to paint the end that one just simply screws onto there so the easy UHF is mounted on the end and on this side we have Cat5 which I've got to cut off I might not actually, I've got some other connectors for that um, so we've got Cat5 cable going to the easy UHF and these things I can't remember what, what they for oh yeah one goes to the, the elevator and the other one goes to the aileron so there's the elevator which I'm going to put um, I'm going to cut this off very short there I think or there and just have a connector on it so I can just plug the boom in and just connect the um, what's it up thing elevator that was it now all I've got to do is put the top piece on here and paint the top side of the wings which is going to be fun because I don't want any ripples or bubbles or anything else on it so I don't know it might work <laughs> and on this wing this one's turned out about the same uh, there is tape going down here that's why it's super shiny there um, that's pulled off very slightly there so I've got to touch that up I've got to touch the hole up that's what she said um, but yeah it's, it hasn't come out bad I'm just hoping the top side is better uh, the reason I think the reason why it's gone all bubbly like that well it's not it's not bad bubbly uh, the reason why it's gone like that is because I sanded all these little nobbles or whatever you call them down uh, which are part of the mold so hopefully the top side oh, I've got to get rid of these runs um, the top side is going to go better oh incidentally I might be changing that because I've got um, the version 2 GPS which does something else don't know what but it's better version 2's are always better well apparently so I'm gonna, yeah I think I'm going to put the V2 in there as you can see because I cut that all out I put reinforcement up the top um, yeah so I'm going to paint these today and then I'll have to start working on the on the fuselage uh, put all that together so I've glued together the uh, vertical stabilizers onto the horizontal stabilizer um, I've also attached the elevator and as you can see lovely and free with that on the top uh, and as I said in the previous video the reason I put that on the top is to stop it from dragging on the grass when you're landing or, or anything so I've also used um, hinged pin hinged pinned pinned hinges that was the one on there the only thing I'm I'm not too happy about these because they don't they don't feel they don't feel 
that stable I might actually put a carbon rod across there um, just to hold it in place or something across the top I don't know but that's done and I'm very pleased with it actually quick tip um, to get rid of any releasant that they actually put on this frame before you paint it um, you can actually use uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect it at all you can um, put it on a piece of stuff whatever and just wipe it over to get rid of all the releasant and it does clean it up um, it gets rid of a bit of the tarnish not the tarnish the shiny so there must be some releasant or something on there anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna paint this um, I've masked well not masked I've covered the holes uh, for them for the mountain for the bolt the bolts so I'm gonna paint over it now I've got these lens extenders um, for the Mobius uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip this uh, strip this Mobius down uh, so as I can mount the lens away from this so I could have this somewhere accessible where I can just press record and everything else and I can put the lens right up the very back somewhere that normally you couldn't uh, put it I've got the extension cable in which is going to sit there the Mobius is there and the camera goes into the bottom there which sticks out of the bottom now this it's not going to stick out of that far uh, this is the bottom's going to be covered by the belly pan anyway um, so I'm going to cut a hole in the belly pan but that that will sit there like that I mounted the pito tube as you um, saw before um, I've routed the wiring uh, the tubing, sorry, back to the airspeed sensor which is there uh, that uh, goes through the CAN bus and the CAN bus goes up to the alerter which is going to be mounted there and also I'm toying with the idea because I've got the Easy UHF on the uh, one wing, I don't know and I've got the GPS on the other wing so I think I'm going to put that in there now I'm using a standard rubber duck um, antenna purely because I'm using a patch antenna for the receiver so I think that'll work oh and I've also the temperature sensor in the ESC here, which you can't really see it very well, but I don't mind. Um, and that's long enough just to uh, plug into the vector, which is well, the vector is going to be here. Uh, it's just so as I can actually uh, slide it out if need with the whole tray. I've also added a microphone, um, it's just a cheap one, don't know if it will work, but. Anyway, that's plugged into the audio port on the on the vector, so hopefully I'll have audio. Well, I'll be able to hear something, although it's just going to be internal noise. So I don't know. Never put a microphone on it before. On this side of the fuselage, um, on this nice slot that's conveniently placed here, I'm going to be putting my T beacon. That way. I don't know if you've you've seen the video on my uh, on these things, but it, it's everything that I ever wanted. They're actually uh, was it fifty dollars? I think it was. Hang on, sixty dollars. This is the green version. Uh, the green version's got a a beeper and an LED on it. But if you buy the blue version, uh, the blue version, the minute is fifty dollars. But you can buy an external um, beeper and LED for it. Now with these things, you can also get a an adapter that goes to the NASA and the I think the the original Phantom. Although I hate I hate DJI products now. This isn't DJI, by the way. By the way, 
Um, he's also got a um, an adapter for the Phantom 3. It's uh, basically a tracker. And then all you need is a cheap radio, like the Bofeng I think it is. And all you do is you turn it on. And that's it. And then after a certain amount of time you can set it so as it will uh, give you a beacon. Um, or you can actually activate it by um, PTT. When you key the mic it, you know, it activates it. Anyway I'll put a link in the description of my uh, review of these. I was so impressed and I mean I was so impressed that I bought another one. Which is just here charging away. The first use. So get one. You really, 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 really need one. It's better than any other tracker that I've seen. I know this looks a complete and utter mess.